Okay, so we've been talking about carbonyls for some time now, and we've gone through three different iterations of carbonyl chemistry. In the first unit, we talked about aldehyde and ketone chemistry, which involved simply nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl, and that gives you a tetrahedral intermediate, which can't break down. In the second unit, we talked about the other class of carbonyls, uh, the carboxylic acid derivatives. Those also involved nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl, but of course, in this case, then that tetrahedral intermediate can collapse back out and give you a substitution product. So in both of these uh, units that we talked about, the carbonyl acted as an electrophile. In the unit that we've just covered, uh, we talked about alpha substitution of carbonyls, um, and that proceeds via the enolate, right, this type of intermediate, uh, to give alpha substitution products. And in this case, the carbonyl is acting as a nucleophile, okay? So we have one more unit to cover. And in this case, we're going to talk about what are known as carbonyl condensation reactions. And in this case, we're going to basically combine the different reactivities that we've learned about. So we're going to have one carbonyl serve as an electrophile and another carbonyl serve as a nucleophile via its enolate. So we're gonna bring two carbonyls together to give this type of um, intermediate, um, if not product, uh, depending on exactly what X is. Okay, so here we're, we're sort of, we're bringing everything together uh, to, to get to um, this, this last uh, topic of carbonyl chemistry, which turned out to be enormously important for organic synthesis. Okay, so let's start off and talk about one of the uh, absolutely the most important reactions in organic chemistry, and this is something that's called the aldol reaction. Okay, so just uh, generally speaking, what we're going to have in the aldol is an aldehyde as our electrophile, and then we are going to have an enolate of some type, and just for the moment, we won't care how this was generated. Uh, but however, however we generate that, uh, there, there's our enolate, and this is simply going to do um, the nucleophilic attack of the enolate to the aldehyde, and then after we protonate that um, <clears throat> alkoxide that we form, we will get to this type of product. Okay. And this is our aldol product, um, and sometimes the product itself is called the aldol uh, or the aldol product. Um, you know, this is the aldol reaction, okay? And the reason it's called aldol, so a lot of reactions are named after people. Um, this one actually describes the structure. Uh, and so the first aldol reaction to, to have been done was two aldehydes coming together. So aldehyde was the enolate and the, and the electrophile. So you ended up with a product that had an aldehyde here and then an alcohol and thus aldehyde alcohol or aldol. Okay, so that name has just stuck for uh, the generic um, reaction. Okay, so let's give it just a very simple example. Okay, so if I took acid aldehyde, so just very simple two carbon aldehyde, and I treat this with some sodium hydroxide or other source of hydroxide would work. I will actually condense two equivalents of the acid aldehyde into the aldol product. Okay, so there's the one acid aldehyde that was the nucleophile, there's the other acid aldehyde that served as the electrophile. Okay, note that this is reversible, so all aldol reactions are inherently reversible. Um, they're usually um, sort of on a knife edge in terms of um, energy. So uh, given a certain um, change in structure, you can have them be uh, 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 unfavored or, or favored. Um, and we'll talk about one of those in just a second. Um, so how does this work? What is the mechanism? Well, it's uh, again, just combining what we've already learned, both in terms of the enolate formation and then the, the actual addition process. So one equivalent of the acid aldehyde is going to undergo enolization with our hydroxide base. Okay, so we'll pull off that alpha proton, we'll push the electrons up, and then that's going to give us our acid aldehyde enolate. 
Okay, so there we go. There's our enolate. And then this can find an unenolized molecule of acetaldehyde. Okay, so then we're just simply going to use the enolate as the nucleophile and do a nucleophilic addition to that acetaldehyde in the same way that uh, we saw um, in previous um, lectures. Okay, and then so the intermediate here is going to be this alkoxide. And then at this point, we can just finish this off by protonating that alkoxide. And we will then end up with our aldol product there. And if you notice, we have just regenerated hydroxide. So this whole process can be catalytic um, in, the, in the hydroxide, okay? So note that I'm showing that this is completely reversible, and it is, so we might as well just quickly talk about the reverse mechanism. Of course, it's going to be uh, the exact opposite, but um, it's probably useful for us to draw this out explicitly. Okay, so in the first step, we're going to take hydroxide and we're going to remove that proton, right? The last step, we added the proton. So in this first step of the reverse, we're going to remove the proton. That gives us our alkoxide there. And then we're going to now break that carbon-carbon bond. So we're going to push those electrons down and then that's going to break that CC bond that we would have formed in this step here. We're going to break that, push those electrons back, and that actually now is going to uh, basically eject the nucleophile, uh, which in this case was the acetaldehyde enolate. Okay, so there's our regenerated acetaldehyde, and then this is the, the enolate that we just ejected. And then, of course, the final step here is just to reprotonate the acetaldehyde, okay? And so then this is going to regenerate our second equivalent of acetaldehyde. Okay, so that's the reverse mechanism. Um, and incidentally, uh, this, uh, when, you, when you do a, um, an aldol reaction in reverse, this is going to be called a retroaldol. We have aldol, we have retroaldol, and those are, um, at least under these types of conditions, um, uh, very reversible. So if you, if you throw an aldehyde in with um, hydroxide, um, there's always going to be proton and base around. So both of those mechanisms are going to be possible. Okay, so all right, the, uh, the aldol reaction is favorable for, um, for many carbonyls um, and, and otherwise it wouldn't be a useful reaction. Um, and for aldehydes specifically, um, when we do the reaction, um, the equilibrium lies to the right. Lies to the aldol, okay? So um, in general, whenever we have an aldehyde, um, uh, and, and this could be an aldehyde dimerization or it could be another, an enolate from some other carbonyl, ketone, ester, um, adding to an aldehyde, um, those are generally going to be favored. The products are, are uh, stable um, relative to the starting materials. And so we get a, a forward reaction. Okay, so that's going to be favored. Okay. Now for ketones though, it, it, right, so if this electrophile was a ketone, and so all we're doing there is just changing this, this uh, proton here into um, an alkyl group, uh, ketone aldols are not favored, okay? Not favored, okay? So if we look at this, we had uh, acetone, let's say, okay? And uh, obviously we could go through that same mechanism if we threw sodium hydroxide um, here uh, in, into acetone, we could enolize the acetone and then that acetone enolate could add to uh, an unenolized molecule of acetone and you could get to the same um, aldol product. 
Okay, so that might look something like this. Okay, so there's there's the molecule of, of acetone that was the enolate, and here's the one that got added to. Um, so this can happen, but the thing is, is that the equilibrium uh, lies to the side of the starting materials. And, and like I said, at the energy of starting material and products for the aldol is sort of on a knife edge. And so if you do something that, um, that you know, uh, destabilizes the product, you're going to tip the balance back to the starting material. And in this case, adding to a ketone, you know, it, it makes a, a pretty hindered, sterically hindered tertiary alcohol. And that's just enough to, to kick this back uh, towards the, the starting material. Okay, so we have more to talk about uh, with the aldol. Uh, what we're going to talk about in the next video is uh, something that we might do to actually make the ketone aldol, uh, aldol reaction uh, favorable. Um, but it's not going to be favorable for this product. We're actually going to use that product and do something else. So that's what we'll do next.